This video is a short introduction to chapter 7 where we're going to start looking at genes that lie on the same chromosome. We'll be talking about this chapter for several days in class and so today's video is just a short intro. So if you remember back uh, when we talked about Mendel, Mendel's dihybrid cross, we talked about the fact that if you get a dihybrid individual, such as shown in the F1 generation here, there are four possible gametes that can come from that individual. And so the important thing is that big R can be together with big Y or big R can be together with little y. Based on these results, Mendel came up with his principle of independent assortment. And as we talked about before, independent assortment occurs because of the movement of chromosomes during meiosis. So this is just a review of what happens when you have a dihybrid cell going through meiosis. So here you have big A little a, big B little b, you go through S phase, you get sister chromatids, and at anaphase 1 of meiosis, there's two ways that things could line up. So either you line up the big A and the big B chromosomes so that they go to one side and little a and little b go in the other direction, or the chromosomes line up so that big A goes together with little b and little a goes together with big B. From those alternative scenarios, you actually can end up with four different types of gametes. So this was what you would see at the end of meiosis 1, and these are what you would see at the end of meiosis 2 from each of those two scenarios. And the movement of those chromosomes explains why you end up with one quarter of each of those four types of gametes during meiosis. Now what's going to be different when we consider genes that are on the same chromosome together? What I'd like you to do is to start to think about this on your own and to work through an example. And so what I'm going to have you guys work through before class is um, on a piece of paper, I'd like you to redraw this figure of meiosis, so an, a dihybrid cell going through meiosis, except that the A and the B genes are on the same chromosome. In this particular example, we are going to just assume that there is no crossing over because that makes it a lot more complicated. So just to summarize then, here is a template for what I'd like you to do in preparation for class. So I'd like you to draw out what the two homologous chromosomes are going to look like in a diploid cell in this dihybrid individual, and then what they're going to look like after going through S phase. And then the two cells that result from the first division of meiosis, I'd like you to draw those there, and then draw the four cells that result from meiosis 2. And again, remember, there's going to be no crossing over, and so we're going to see how things will be different when we have genes that are on the same chromosome. When you come to class next time, you will turn in this assignment, and it will be graded in lieu of the normal quiz.